Well, shooters and reloaders and also three circles, passengers and members, it's Fortune Cookie coming to you from the hot lead zone. And yes, I'm wearing a Star Trek cruise shirt. Two months ago, I was on the Star Trek cruise for this year. And these are the stars that were there. All these people, stars from Star Trek. Anyway, we got back from the cruise, no problem. No one was sick except for a few minor things going on on the ship, but that was the beginning of the coronavirus starting to get to be a, a real shutdown situation. We got back and our ship, the Explorer of the Seas, went out on another cruise after we left. And that cruise wound up getting coronavirus, some problems on that ship. So uh, we got off just in time. At any rate, what we're doing today is a video on hollow base bullets. Let's go over to the Sizer Lubricator bench and get into that. Now the idea of hollow base bullets is nothing new. Minier actually had his mini ball become very significant in the American Civil War with a mini bullet. And that's the one where they put the bullet and rammed it down onto the black powder in those uh, Springfield muskets and uh, wreaked a lot of havoc with the tactics that they had in those days. Anyway, today we still have a lot of hollow base designs and let's talk about the rules of thumb for hollow base bullets. But first let's go ahead and look at some examples. Here you see a plastic hollow base bullet that was very popular in the plastic ammunition where you put a primer into the case and then you put this hollow base plastic bullet into it and then you could shoot indoors with just the force of the primer driving these bullets and uh, have target practice in your garage or or in your front yard or backyard and this kind of thing so these are still available and these plastic bullets are a spin-off of our fine 38 caliber hollow base wad cutters that are used for target shooting. So I've got a whole bunch of them here and uh, thanks to Dave Thorzax for these. The 38 caliber hollow base wad cutter is one of the most popular bullets that was used during the times of uh, popularity in NRA bullseye shooting. That's still popular today but you don't hear much about it because of all the action shooting games that you see on TV. A further spin-off of that same hollow base wad cutter are bullets such as these berry bullets that are wad cutters that are hollow base. So you see these fine bullets are very popular for those who wish to shoot the hollow base wad cutter but want a plated bullet. So you got the plastic, you got the lead cast, and then you have the plated bullets. Now after the mini bullet in the American Civil War, black powder was still in use of course until the turn of the century and a lot of bullet designs for black powder had hollow bases. Such as you see this one here is a current Lee mold 405 grain bullet for the 4570 that's hollow base. So we can cast these at home ourselves. So the purpose of the hollow base is to create a situation where you increase the bearing surface without having more bearing surface. And that's because just like the mini bullet, the pressure of the powder charge goes into the hollow base and causes a sideways pressure on the base of the bullet that increases the grip of the rifling so you basically have an increase in bearing surface caused by the hollow base. And that's as true for all hollow base designs today as it ever was in the past. Okay, rules of thumb for hollow base bullets. The first rule of thumb is you can't shoot hollow base bullets as fast as you can shoot solid base bullets. And the reason why is because the pressure on the side of the hollow base 
reaches a certain point where there'll be problems. We'll go into that in a little while. But that's why you've got to keep the velocities down a little lower and the powder charges down a little lower with hollow base bullets. To give you an example, wad cutter 38 caliber bullet can be fired with a 3.5 grains of bullseye charge, but when you have a hollow base facing the powder charge, you've got to cut that back to 2.8 grains of bullseye instead of 3.5 grains or 3.2 grains, whatever you want to load. But you've got to use less powder with the hollow base. When I was shooting PPC, some competitors actually use as low as 2.7 grains of bullseye with a hollow base 38 caliber wad cutter. These normally weighed 148 grains, as do these right here. The danger of trying to shoot excessive pressure with hollow base bullets is that you can actually blow the skirt off. Now, the side wall of the hollow base is called the skirt. And what happens is if you, if you use too much powder, the pressure actually causes so much gripping of the skirt to the rifling that the pressure then causes a separation of the bullet on the inside of the hollow base. That's called blowing the skirt off. And you'll know that happens when you're shooting bullseye and you touch off with a six o'clock hold and instead of a nice round hole in the 10 ring, you see two wild holes that are misshapen anywhere on the target. That's if you're lucky, because if you blow the skirt off, it's possible for the, the back end of the skirt to stuck in the barrel, and that would cause a barrel obstruction for the next shot. So it's actually dangerous. If you're shoppers of Barry's bullets, as you know, they actually have two hollow base wad cutters. One that has a thicker skirt and one that has a thinner skirt. So the rule of thumb is that the thinner the skirt, the more problem you have with blowing the skirt off. And so you've got to go with a lower pressure round and a lower powder charge. So if you have a thin skirt, you got to go at least 2.8 or 2.7 grains of bullseye or equivalent. Go more than that and you threaten to blow the skirt off and have the problems we talked about. So thickness of the skirt is a consideration. So you see here, this is the berry design that has the little thicker skirt. And with this design here, you see, that's got a pretty thick skirt. Now with some black powder rifle loads, look how thick that skirt is. What that means is it's a lot stronger and less liable to blow the skirt off, although you still have to look at that. Now the second rule of thumb is how deep is the hollow base? Because the deeper the hollow base is, the weaker the skirt is. And so if you've got a deep hollow base, then again, you've got to reduce powder charge, reduce pressure. Otherwise, you've got problems. So you notice this 4570 bullet by Lee, that is not considered a overly deep hollow base. And it's got plenty of skirt thickness. So we can go with a little bit bigger powder charge with this one. And it's actually a black powder bullet anyway. You're going to be loading 100% or more if you compress the charge with black powder or black powder substitute. So you can go a little bit more with that one, not have to worry about it as much. But if that skirt were thinner or the hollow base deeper, then we have to accordingly adjust our powder charge. Now, interestingly note that the hollow base gives us more bearing surface equivalent at least to one more driving band. So if we're going to go ahead and size some of these driving bands down to allow seating the bullet farther out of the case, we can do that with a hollow base easier than if we don't have a hollow base because we've got more bearing surface to begin with. If we lose one of those driving bands, sizing it down to allow the bullet to be seated farther out, we still have a lot more 
bearing service thanks to the hollow base. So this bullet will allow us to do a lot of experimentation. Again, it's a black powder design because notice how deep those grease grooves are. Lots of lube in there. That's typical of black powder designs. Whereas smokeless designs have smaller, more conservative grease grooves. Personally, I really like these hollow base 38 caliber wad cutters because that's a great way to spend an afternoon at the range. And that's to go there and just shoot offhand at a target at anywhere from 15 to 25 yards and just enjoy shooting these because they're very accurate and low recoil, very pleasurable to shoot. Now for those of you who like to load hollow base wad cutters backwards, again the same thing applies. The thinner the skirt and the deeper the hollow base, the more expansion and explosive action you'll get loading the hollow base wad cutter backwards. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got to go to my alcove and regenerate. See you in the next video. Bye for now.